You're listening to Fabulosity, in which we discuss what you bring to the tea party, essentials for the modern heroine. I'm Caroline from Sparkles and Crumbs. And I'm Zandra from Fashionably Light. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode, episode 16, in which we discuss mood lifting loungewear. So we're on to another style episode this week. Mm-hmm. And I think it speaks for itself, really. It does. I mean, you know, often I I certainly spend lots of time hanging out in my house in the evenings, so it's nice to do it in some kind of style. <laughs> yes, I mean, we should do everything in style, really, so we're just covering it one piece at a time. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Zandra, what's fabulous in your life today? Well, after a reading drought in which I was having really bad luck with books and I just... I picked up so many that I I couldn't bring myself to finish. I finally stumbled upon a page turner that is Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray. And it being a classic and everything, I'm really surprised that people haven't been insisting that I read this book sooner because it is so perfect for me. Have you read it? I I haven't read it. Should I? Oh, you should. It's full of quotables, so you would especially love it. (laughs) I have to resist, like, underlining everything because he's very quippy, Oscar Wilde. Why why do you love it? Why is it so so perfect for you? Well, it's quite sinister, isn't it? Sinister how? Like a sinister story? Um, sort of. But it's mostly about art and reality versus fiction and becoming too consumed in your art and just sort of reflecting on the, the the state of being human oh i will have to pick it yes. up yes <laughs> it's very fabulosity i haven't finished it yet so it could get more sinister but that's that's my perception from halfway through and mm-hmm. um i've been reading the cloth bound penguin classics version which is especially marvelous is it really pretty yes have you seen <laughs> those no oh we'll have to put up a picture of them they um penguin released these hardcover classics that are each different color and they have little images they have i have the whole set of jane austen's they sold them at anthropology so i got a bunch of them on Ooh, sale pretty yeah i like it. books as art yes definitely and it's just it feels really nice to read and i've been reading it on the the t the subway in boston um mm-hmm. which is a nice contrast to the usual e-readers and iphones feels very gl- very mm-hmm. luxe very fabulous tea so what is your fabulous tea and mine's very episode related i just it's quite it's not as exciting as yours i just went and bought some new pajamas that's very exciting describe it was, uh they are from well because i'm going on holiday in a couple of weeks and we're all going to be with a bunch of friends in a big apartment and i kind of have a lot of warm cozy pajamas but none that are kind of really appropriate for hanging kind of about socially in um in the summer so i got that it's so cool they're from primark it's like a popcorn themed little shorts and vest cute so it's little red and white pinstripe shorts and a top with popcorn on but like make pop it like it's hot <laughs> and you're going to they barcelona me up. i am yes i cannot wait sandra i can't oh. wait to just be lying on a beach with carver yes. it's what i do best <laughs> <laughs> well it will happen soon i know i just like counting down the days <laughs> But yes, it, like I love buying pajamas. I, it's one of my weaknesses. Like really good loungewear. Mm. It always feels like a treat and a necessity at the same time. Well, it is. I can just think of nothing worse than kind of slumping because people like slump around and like just their boyfriends like or like old t-shirts and like yeah horrible old sweatpants and oh yeah. I don't. Like, I don't think I'd be able to sleep very well <laughs> if I were wearing uninspired pajamas. No, it's true. I guess I've gotten well, used to it, but... <laughs> well, I remember, so I, I dug it back out again, but I really love the Bombshell Manual of Style mm-hmm. by Lauren Stover. And so she has a whole section on loungewear and sleepwear, and she says, like, a bombshell knows that anything can happen in the middle of the night. A fire, an earthquake, a party, and dresses for the occasion. A bombshell does not sleep in her sleepwear, but may lounge in it and drape it across her folding screen or a chair before going to bed. Are, are they what are what does a bombshell sleep in then uh presumably like chanel number five like marilyn yes okay that's <laughs> what i thought it was going for so you have to have like a costume of of sleepwear well, ready sort of like you're saying with the um with the popcorn pajamas where they're more for lounging than for sleeping yeah 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 well, oh who was it 
I remember reading an interview with someone, like, it was a style profile. I'm desperately trying to remember who it was, but they were saying they don't own pyjamas. They just have a big trunk of, like, really gorgeous maxi dresses. Hmm. And, like, robes that they, like, just throw on when they're lounging around the house. I was asking my mom about this, actually, and she was saying in Korea, at least traditionally, people would wear, or women would wear, like, long nightgowns that sort of look more like dresses than than pajamas yeah because there's a difference between like a really lovely robe and like a ratty old toweling robe right yes there is a there is a difference so it sounds like there are different flavors almost of of loungewear where you have to have the kind that you actually sleep in the kind that even if it's chanel number five um the kind that (laughs) you wear to like hang out with people in your pajamas like a, a slumber party pajamas and it totally depends on the season as well. Yes. So for winter, oh, it was a mi- it's um, Oisho. It's a Spanish shop that just does exclusively like loungewear and lingerie. And I got there. It's this ridiculous white kind of fluffy, fleecy wool pajama that makes you look like a little sheep. Oh. And then a giant fluffy grey dressing gown with a little hood that makes you look like a rabbit. That's amazing. I feel so that's like we're winter. <laughs> oh, I feel like rabbits would sleep really well too. I know it's very warm and comforting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get really cold, just normally, but especially in English winter. Um, oh yeah, I hate it. <laughs> oh yeah. So I, I layer up on the. I have cashmere leggings, and oh, that's such a good idea. Sometimes in my university room, which wasn't very well heated, I would wear like five shirts. Which was not comfortable. There's got to be a better way. <laughs> this is why everyone needs to live in warm climates. It just makes more sense. <laughs> well, I would wrap up in my Scottish blanket as well. That really helps. I just pour, I just got a poor, like, shivering Sandra. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, buried under layers of clothes. <laughs> trying to keep warm. Fortunately, it's warmer now. And hopefully we're not making our listeners uh, too warm by, by hearing us talk about <laughs> layers of wool and, and fabric. But it's it's just the truth. Oh, and also, um, I had really bad heating when I was living in London, and my head would get cold. Oh, did you sleep in a hat? Yeah, so I would, like, put the covers around my head. Oh, Zandra, this is, she sounds like my worst nightmare. I hate being cold. Well, I was talking to one of my guy friends who doesn't have a lot of hair, and he was like, no, I understand. My, my wife doesn't get it, oh. but I have to wear a hat to bed. Oh! So awful. <laughs> oh, him. I guess that maybe that's why people wear nightcaps. Yeah. Do people still do that? They do in Gilmore Girls. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> it's just so, it's so just so Jane Austen. Yeah. I was watching. I'm rewatching the seventh season of Gilmore Girls, and um, Emily Gilmore, the the grandmother, is going off on a rant, and she's like, I, <laughs> "I've been Richard Gilmore's wife." For the past however many years, and this is my job. And when when he needs a nightcap sewn, I stitch it for him. And this is like two thousand four or something. <laughs> but they are wonderfully old fashioned. I have not. I have not heard of anyone wearing a nightcap, like in in this century. Yeah, That's amazing. <laughs> well, if anyone did, it would be them. Well, if yeah. anyone is good, if you're, if we're going for like you know having some kind of costume for your loungewear, that would qualify. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it would keep your head warm, I hope. Mm. I think also, you know, this whole idea of, you know, the bombshell idea of just having something on hand ready to grab. Yes. To throw on, to answer the door, you know, um, go get a, like a drink of milk or something. I found um, in the Canaries, just in a marketplace, it is my new favourite thing. I'm wearing it now. Ooh, I can it's see it. my red satin kimono. Ooh. It's, like it's very long, classy. Satiny robe. And I just feel like I should... You know, when I'm wearing it, I feel like I should always have red lipstick and a cigarette holder. It's that kind of robe. <laughs> and it's very easy just to chuck on and, you know, you're decent and covered, but you still feel very luxurious and kind of vampy. <laughs> and you, I, look, you can find them on eBay for like eight pounds. Yeah. I would definitely re- recommend one. It sounds really comfortable as well, the fabric. It is. Well, I'm ridiculous. I don't know if you can see on Skype. Well, obviously listeners, you can't see, <laughs> but I have like satin sheets. Yes, I remember. And now I just hate, I can't even deal with normal sheets. <laughs> I like r- really soft cotton. Yeah, it just feels so luxurious. Yeah. Or not even soft cotton, just like clean feeling cotton. Like hotel mm. room 
sheets. Oh, see, my boyfriend hates the satin sheets. Oh. He's always claiming, he's like, they're so slippery. <laughs> <laughs> I just want normal sheets. I'm like, too bad. <laughs> yes. No, we won't settle for normal. <laughs> Come on. I do. So that's like, a, like having really, lux- like, splashing out with a little bit extra tab, really luxurious kind of fabrics in your loungewear. Like, as you mm. said, your cashmere leggings. Yeah. Like, that's so much nicer than just some £2 Primark leggings. Right. I can't sleep in... Well, I, I in general, I don't usually wear... I, have such, I can't sleep in cheap things. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say non-natural fibers. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I generally don't wear unnatural fibers. Like, I, I can't really wear polyester or anything like that, but especially for sleeping. Oh, it would be so comfortable. Grown accustomed to some nice cotton. So do you have any favorite kind of lingerie? Lingerie? Loungewear brands? <laughs> I I noticed that my loungewear has a color scheme. Ooh. Which is strange because... Is this deliberate? No. I don't... Well, no, it's not. Um, it just sort of happened that way, where I have a lot of grays and sort of powdery blues and pinks. Mm, and quite... my favorite... I, I almost said lingerie as well. My favorite <laughs> loungewear comes from... It sounds like loungewear. They sound very close. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you wear them very close together as well. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, my favorite loungewear comes from anthropology, like most of my favorite things. <laughs> um, I have Constellation pajama bottoms, which are navy blue, so they're the exception to my powder mm-hmm. theme. Um, but they have little, I, I'm pretty sure they're made up constellations of various animals. Um, it's just, I, I like the starry theme. For I love it. It's like sleep themed. Yes, exactly. You're like Blair dressing for the occasion. Oh my gosh, that is the best compliment. <laughs> oh, so I was going to talk about Gossip Girl. Surprise, surprise. Um, oh, they are always like having brunch in kind of gorgeous robes and. Yeah, I mean, every time you catch them in their pajamas or dressing gowns, it's always tray chic. And of course, having their hair and makeup done perfectly helps as well. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> but the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants was just on TV. And I love that movie. It's so good. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, definitely invest in the two hours. Um, and Blake Lively. Um, in her like first role, isn't it? Yeah, I think that was her breakout role. And she plays a slightly different character from Serena. And she's sort of this athletic girl. So she's coming back from camp and she's wearing like these slumpy Ugg boots and sweatpants and t-shirt and it just looks so different from how I'm used to seeing her as Serena <laughs> where you get the direct comparison right there and that was outside as well that was that goes back to our traveling episode where you shouldn't wear that to travel no no you just shouldn't I always a pudding quote oh it's in this is the bombshell manual again it's mm-hmm. like a bombshell understands protocol and under no circumstances wears sleepwear or intimate apparel in public except in case of above mentioned emergencies <laughs> i love that above mentioned emergencies <laughs> yes one must always be prepared i mean even that is dressing for the occasion it's dressing for the occasion of being interrupted oh do you know what's hilarious sandra what? one of the lines her sheet preference is white cotton only with a high thread count bombshells are too sensitive to sleep on polyester oh my gosh i'm such a bombshell apparently (laughs) (laughs) love it yes (laughs) oh oh (laughs) i have a question do you sleep in socks no but i know so many people who do i have to my feet get too cold i think we're sensing that you are quite cold all the time always cold "Oh." oh See, I thought I was often chilly, but don't you just take it to a whole new level? <laughs> no, it, I guess it's a, a superpower. I'm like the opposite of Elsa from Frozen. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> Except I can't actually make anything cool out of my being coldness. Yeah, when I had the song, you let it go, and she's like, the cold never bothered me anyway. I was like, this is not my song. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but it, it does. I try not to let it bother me. Um, I guess I can tolerate heat quite well. Oh, yeah, I love heat. I'd always rather be hot than cold. Yeah. I, I mean, it. Always. I wouldn't rather be hot than cold. But oh, I would. <laughs> I, I think, especially a lot of my English friends are like, oh, it's so cold, it's so cold, and then it gets hot, and they're like, it's too hot. It's too hot. And I'm like, oh, do you know what my perfect sleeping arrangement was? What? Um, when I was working in Tenerife, mm-hmm. and I had my own balcony, 
in the house with the family I was staying with. And at night, the temperature, so this is like the perfect sleeping temperature in my opinion, it was warm enough to, I kind of would drag the duvet outside um, and my pillows and I would sleep on top of that um, just in, you know, like a little vest and shorts, pajama set and a thin kind of sheet or blanket over me and I was like perfectly warm. Oh, that is marvellous. And I'd sleep under the stars. And we were up in the mountains, you could look down and see fireworks going off along the coast at all the resorts. Yeah, I just love it. It was just the most gorgeous temperature, but that to me is the ideal temperature. But of course, loungewear is, I think loungewear even more so than pyjamas. So when you're kind of sitting around the house, you know, watching TV or poshing around making dinner, needs to be more about keeping you warm Mm -hmm. as well in the winter, I would say especially. So definitely slippers. (laughs) Yes. Oh, so um, in a... uh... A moment of fashion weakness. When I was in Australia, I purchased some UGG boots. Oh god, I have some too. I wear them in the house in winter. Well, it's everyone's secret shame. It's fine. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I got home and realized I don't ever want to wear these outside. And um, oh yeah, no, I never wear them outside. <laughs> then when I found out that they're made of sheep, that made me sad. But there's no point in just getting rid of them because of that. Now that I have them, um, oh, that's okay. So I wear them around the house, and they really help keep my feet warm. And then um, when my parents were just in Australia, they were talking to some locals who said that that's their actual purpose, is to wear them as slippers inside the house. Well, that just makes sense, because they're so comfy. Yeah. And really warm. To be honest, in winter, I walk around the house sometimes in my fur coat if I'm really cold. (laughs) (laughs) I could never really wear a coat inside my own house that would just feel weird oh but like mine are all lined in like satin yeah yours are really nice uh, so i kind of walk around it's like it's like been hugged by a bear all the time oh <laughs> okay well when you put it like that i just wear them when i'm feeling sad <laughs> and cold and chilly yeah <laughs> so something i wanted to bring up is um for this week exa- for example i'm spending a lot of time at home and i'm not going outside anywhere so there's really no reason for me to get dressed up so the temptation is just to wear my pajamas all day but but this is why having loungewear is good because you can you change them every day as long as you different fabulous pajamas or robes or change into (laughs) then it's like your costume for the day it's your inside costume i guess so i mean i I can't i can't really do that (laughs) i i can't really fully focus on my work and be in my pajamas so i do have to change so um, I'll wear like a, a less fabulous version of what I would normally wear outside. Um, but I, I like changing into my pajamas as like a treat at the end of the day. Yes, I was about to say it's my favorite thing, like coming back from work and just been like having a bath and just putting on my robe. Yeah, just been, like, it's jam jam there. time. Yeah, I really like um, coming out of the shower and putting on some nice um, lotion on my feet, especially. Like I, I would recommend Lush's Lemony Flutter or something like that. Oh, it's that's, so good, isn't it's it? It's so good. Well, it's cuticle butter, but it's really for any sort of dry or sore oh, areas. Goodness. So anything that's really, um, what's a more more fashionable word than greasy? Oily. Oily. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's not quite, um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> something that's really strong lotion Mm-hmm. The sort of hard wearing. I like to put that on my feet after they've been cleaned and then put on some nice uh, socks and then Potter. they feel all cozy. What's that? And potter around. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So I really love David and Goliath. Oh, yes. Pajamas. They're I so think funny. They're so cute. They're so funny. I want ones that just say, like, you're so pergly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you own any? So David and Goliath did the original. Oh, yeah, I own a load of, like, tank tops and pyjama bottoms from them. And um, they're not too um, expensive. Yeah. Um, they're just great. I've got one with, like, a little angry, like, a really happy-looking little thunder cloud on it saying, like, I will destroy you. Aww. They just make me laugh. This is the brand the kind of um, boys are stupid throw rocks at them. Yes. Pitch, and they the... do all kinds of PJs. and Yeah. And the come to the dark side, we have cookies. Yes, yes, and it glows in the dark. I have that vest. Ah. <laughs> it's, got little, it's got a little ghoul yeah. holding a plate out and it glows in the dark. Oh, it looks very tempting, those cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other favourite go-to places to get loungewear? Um, I really love 
Elle McPherson. Oh. Intimates. So she does really gorgeous, gorgeous night dresses. Mm -hmm. As in, you you kind of have to have a robe on over them if you you know you're going to socialise with people. <laughs> but what kind of pot around your house? They're quite revealing. Yeah, they're very bombshell. So I have like a gorgeous red one, and they're very comfy. They're always in gorgeous materials, mm -hmm. and it has kind of like a lace kind of top, and then just kind of like a short kind of red, really lovely, high quality cotton skirt. And they're just so they just kind of feel very luxurious. Yes, yeah, she's great. Yeah, she makes amazing stuff. Also, if I could afford it, Stella McCartney, that would be amazing. Like, all her satin night dresses and teddies and things, but... Yes. Boy, one day. <laughs> but yeah, do tell us if there's any kind of fabulous pyjama nightwear brands we need to check out as well. <laughs> Especially Europe. Europe always does really gorgeous loungewear, I always think. Like, continental Europe? Yeah, like, kind of Italy and Spain and France always seem to have loads of gorgeous, like, lingerie pyjama shops everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, um, I, remember, I remember that about Paris. Like, Tizenis, I remember that. That's, that's a, they just have so many different brands of, mm. that kind of exclusively do loungewear and um, lingerie. It's like my heaven. I would live in my kimono all day if I could. <laughs> Kimono and high heels. Oh, I can't walk in high heels. <laughs> <laughs> Kimono just pat around in my bare feet. Yeah. <laughs> so, what would you wear to a fabulosity slumber party? Oh yes, good question. Yeah. Tell us. Oh, I would wear my kimono and red lipstick, and I would hold the cigarette holder. I don't smoke, but I just want to hold it and pretend I'm Holly Golightly. <laughs> what would you Brilliant. wear? Um. Well, I put myself on the spot. <laughs> I don't have as good an answer as that. I would wear my sheep slippers. Your sheep I have... skin slippers? No, not sheep skin. These oh, are these aren't real sheep. <laughs> these are pink. Uh they're they're little pink slippers and there's a, a sheep on each foot and one says awake and the other one says a sheep. That's so cute. It's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's apparently so cute it's giving me a coughing attack. <laughs> yes, yeah, so tell us what you would wear to the Fabulosity Slumber Party, which would be amazing. Yeah. Okay, one day. One day. One day. Any other business? Well, we've had some really great correspondence in the last week. Yes, we had thank you, correspondence. A wonderful comment from Ronna, who was actually commenting on, I think, a few episodes back, episode 50? 15. 15. Yeah, Far uh, Away Friends. Far Away Friends. Yes, sorry, I was going to say episode 16. Um... Should we read out her comment, just the last kind of bit, where she's asking yes. some advice? Yes, I think this is a good topic to discuss. Mm -hmm. So she says, I've been having a hard time with this because I just graduated from university and all my very closest friends had already left. I even have a hard time keeping in touch with the ones only 30 minutes away because I'm a very situational person. I've also had some conflicts with my friends when it seemed like I was all of a sudden showing interest in their lives, when I'd been thinking that everything was fine and it wouldn't be hard to jump right back in. Now things are a little awkward. Do you two talk to your close friends about how you handle long distance friendships differently? Do you come up with a plan? Like, so I've actually had this problem. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's, obviously I'm very lucky in that there's some friends I talk to all the time, no matter how far away we are. But often some people, you naturally do just drift apart. It doesn't mean that when you don't see each other again or do exchange the occasional Skype call, you won't still get along fine. But some people aren't as happy with that, I think. Yeah. I've never had this come up as a, a confrontational issue. Like, it sounds like this is where it, sometimes it's hard to keep in touch with people. And I'm usually the one who notices it rather than the other person because I'm, I'm like the keeping in touch queen because most of my friends are, are long distance. <laughs> so I have lots of practice with it. Um, and the method that works best for me is to set up a regular time to talk to someone or at the very least to have the next time you're talking to someone scheduled or the next time you're meeting someone. But I think, as Ronna said, she's quite a situational person. Often yeah. you don't want to feel like you've been forced to talk to someone if you really, you know, you, you haven't got anything new to say or talk about since the last time you spoke to them. I, right. I think, but no, I think yours is a really good idea. But, you know... Well, if you make a fun yeah. tradition out of it instead of just a, okay, every Tuesday at this time we will speak. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, okay. like, start a podcast with your friends. <laughs> this is our advice <laughs> for everything now, isn't it? <laughs> Well, like, your advice is, is always be planning the next holiday, and um, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> in every situation. That's, yeah, that's relevant. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I've been much help. I, I definitely, 
had situations where people have felt like I'm not keeping in touch enough mm. which surprised me at the time because I kind of thought I was in quite a low in a low-key kind of oh I saw this in Ford of you way in the way we spoke about it in the podcast yeah. um I think people do just have different parameters of what they think is an acceptable amount of keeping in touch and if someone gets offended I think all you can do is apologize and be like right okay well how how should we do this differently right you know, I guess it's a good that. thing that they've given feedback in a way. I don't know if it was in yeah, if they didn't care, they a friendly they. spirit, but <laughs> yeah. But if anyone has any better advice than kind of my ramblings for Ronan, then <laughs> feel free to add in the comments. <laughs> yes, hopefully we've helped a little bit. And uh, we love hearing from all of our listeners. So if you have anything else to add um, on whatever topic we're talking about, whether it's advice or a call for help. We would love to have you in the conversation. It is a tea party after all. It is a tea party. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. you can get in touch um, either in the comments on the show notes, which is fabulosity, that's ta.com, or on Twitter and Facebook at fabulosity. So yes. do get in touch. Do you get in touch. And our next episode? <gasps> episode 18. Oh my gosh, yes. in which we discuss eating your greens made glamorous. So we'll be discussing some healthy eating in a hopefully approachable way. Then this is going to be coming from me. So <laughs> Get excited! <laughs> Get excited! <laughs> we see you then! See Ciao. you then! Bye! Bye.